Hi, Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to an, our second part of our Chapter 9 lecture series. We are going to be exploring other patterns of inheritance, things a little bit different from what we've learned on Mendelian genetics. So we can talk about all of these collectively as being non-Mendelian. So let's revisit our Mendelian pattern of inheritance so we can more easily identify the differences. In Mendelian genetics, we described complete dominance. So you inherited two alleles. You could inherit a combination of a dominant allele or a recessive allele. So we said if you were homozygous dominant or heterozygous, so that'd be big A, big A, big A, little a, you would have the dominant phenotype. So the physical expression, the appearance would be the same even though you have a different genotype there. And then the only way to get that recessive trait to show up is to be homozygous recessive, so to inherit both recessive alleles. We also saw when you did your monohybrid cross between your heterozygous individuals, that you always got the pattern of a genotypic ratio of one to two to one, and a phenotypic ratio of three to one. Because remember, your homozygous dominant and heterozygous individuals will have the same phenotype. As we progress through, we're gonna see that it doesn't always work that way. That's actually the most simplistic type of inheritance. We're still following along with the ideas that genes can come in different forms called alleles, and that we are inheriting uh, two alleles for each gene, one from each parent, and those alleles are located on chromosomes, but they can be, in a, they can be inherited in ways other than complete dominance. We will have videos for each of these in turn, so incomplete dominance, codominance, pleiotropy, polygenic, and chromosomal linkage, so stay tuned. <laughs> 